windmill. So for that, I do like to go a little bit wider just because it's overhead and depending on how tight your hips are and your back, you might wanna start off with a lighter weight. This is a five. And I'm just gonna start like a triangle pose, like a yoga triangle pose, one leg out, one leg facing you. Um, weight is on that top arm and my hip is gonna slide on over to the side. Really work those four, I'm gonna straight come straight up. So reach for the ankle on your left side, but reach your arm out towards the ceiling the whole time. Here, uh, right on top, here on the lateral position. So sideways, I'm gonna turn towards you. Arm's gonna go here. I'm gonna reach for that angle, come back. I'm trying to stay like in between two panes of glass or a mirror right here, as lateral as you can get it. Notice that's a really good stretch for that hip flexor. And it's work on the obliques as well. That's your kettlebell windmill, slightly lighter. Two different squats I'm gonna show you. The first one's gonna be your regular sumo squat. So slightly wider than hip width apart. Actually, why? But make sure that your hips and make sure that your hips are leveled and that your knees don't go over your toes. Your butt's coming behind you and you're thrusting or you're squatting through your legs. It's in between a plie and a regular um, squat. Goblet squats are a little bit higher here. It's like a front squat. So you're gonna come down through your hips, right back up, neutral. Bring those hips back, engage the core, come straight through. It's kind of like a front squat. So straight and then come through, okay? Again, great lower body exercise and you're engaging. So snatches come up like a swing and they rotate up. So you're gonna come through and straight up. Almost like a single arm kettlebell thrust, but you're really gonna fire through with that arm. Again, use your core to engage it. To see if you can see the full scale here. So up, straight arms. So thrust, a little bit of an upright row, and it's gonna come through you. So it's not like your typical thruster. It's a swing, slightly upright row, and straight up. So really get a good grip on that kettlebell because it's gonna come back to your forearm. Some people don't like that, but it really works your wrists, which are great, are gonna be the kettlebell thrusters. So this one, again, it's gonna be coming from your hips. It's gonna come up like a, almost like an upright row. You're gonna come up here, stay neutral, and come on up. Notice my arms, my arm is as open as I can get it. My shoulders are pretty tight. So I wanna make sure that that's a good, nice line. So again, right, I'm gonna bend, keep your chest open, I'm gonna get that right here. I'm gonna come on up. So it's a thruster and it'll definitely get your heart rate up, right? Again, make sure it's coming from your core, your core's engaged, you're breathing out and in as you contract. So up and out. All right, 15 to 20 on each side. If, again, if your kettlebell's on the heavier side, then 10 is your repetitions. All right, let's do some kettlebell workouts. I'm gonna give you some ideas. Take it however you want. Uh, I'll give you about nine different exercises I have on this workout. And these are ones that I normally do. So they're pretty regular. I'm gonna start with the kettlebell swings. So I'm gonna go slightly wider than hip width apart, enough for my kettlebell to swing through. And I'm gonna thrust through my hip. So I'm gonna let the dumbbell come down, but I'm gonna engage my glutes and to push that dumbbell forward with my hips and glutes, not with my lower back, more from the bottom. Just a full body exercise here, all right? And my legs are staying straight. They're not coming out. They're staying pretty neutral on this workout. So you're just coming on up. This is great conditioning. So um, if you're doing it more 
for a strength workout, go heavier. Um, these are 18 pounds, but I have them all the way up to 50. Depends on like what you're trying to get out of. You feel comfortable with to be able to stabilize your torso. So I like to do it one arm because I can actually focus and concentrate on my elbow going back behind me, my hips staying neutral, and my back not rounding and really firing through that mid back and also lats as you bring that arm down right there, okay? So it looks like an easy exercise, but it definitely takes a lot more concentration. And go as slow as you can. The slower, the more uh, muscles you recruit. Coming back, and here you go. So angle those hips back, and bring the elbow back towards your hips. Not up, don't shrug that shoulder, but back towards your hips, okay? Uh, again, depending on the weight, 10 to 15, is a good set. 